up, Rochelle here, and I am back to share some yarn goodness with you all today. Now, today's video will be a little different. Today, I am going to be talking to you all about how I prepare for yarn fiber festivals. I've been wanting to make this video for a while, but I figured this would be the perfect time because I just finished with the Flock and Spill Fiber Festival in Charlottesville, Virginia, and later this month, I will be going to the Shenandoah. Uh, Valley Fiber Festival in Berryville, Virginia. So let's begin. Now, every time I have a fiber festival coming up, I always have a checklist. I've been using this checklist for years. And I keep this checklist because it keeps me on track and makes sure that I don't forget anything important. Because the worst thing to do is to go to a fiber festival that's not close to your home and you can't go back and get anything or you may have to buy something because you forgot it. So I have this list. It's called my Fiber Festival list and um, I'm going to be checking things off of this list as I share these things with you all. And definitely feel free to use these tips whether you are at a Fiber Festival as a yarn dyer or a craft festival selling your hand knits or any business. This is for any business um, or person that has a booth at a festival or a fair or anything like that. So let's get started. Okay, first things first. Let's start off with our table. So this is the table that we use. My husband and I, we set at this table. It is a four foot table. And as you can see, the legs pop out really, really easy. And it's just enough room for the both of us. Now, I also have a six foot table. In the past, I've had 10 by 20 booths, so I use a bigger table. But um, for the booths that I've had lately, I just have a 10 by 10 booth. So this is our table that we use. Okay. So, of course, if you're sitting at the table, you need to have chairs. Now, this is my chair. Of course it's purple. My longtime viewers will know that my favorite color is purple. But my husband also has a chair. And these are the really simple type of chairs. They just fold out. I think most of you all know what these chairs look like, but really simple chairs it's comfortable it has two cup holders with it and best of all it has it has um a strap and also what i like about this one is that it has a strap on the back like if you want to add an umbrella with it most of the time when you go to a fiber festival you have a tent but sometimes even if you have a tent the sun might shine in so that's a good option if you want to buy one of those detachable umbrellas that goes on these chairs but it's great keeps me comfortable all day and speaking of tent this is a tent that i use it is a 10 by 10 tent and um it's a green tent I do think in the future I want to get a, a new tent and I'll tell you why in just a minute. But this tent, what I like about it is that it comes with a carrying case. It has a carrying handle and best of all, it has wheels. Lifesavers. Love it. Now one thing I would like to do in the future is get a new tent that has side walls. Um, sometimes side walls are detachable like by Velcro. In the past, we've tried to use tarps as sidewalls, but if the wind is blowing, they don't always work out the best. So, you know, that's a problem. Um, also, tents with sidewalls are really good just to create some privacy between you and the other vendor. And also, it's good for, you know, when it's raining or if it's sunny it's great it's great to have a sidewall and you don't have to have four sidewalls even one sidewall is a big big help so definitely check that out now i have my checklist that i use for every festival and i am going to be checking these off as i talk about them so we've already talked about the four foot tent um, the four foot table 
Uh, let's see, the tent, and uh, let's see, we talked about the table. Okay. Yep, table, tent. What else we talked about? Chairs. We talked about chairs. And this is something that you want to do as you're packing for your fiber fest or your craft fair. Just mark things off. Okay, so let's move along. Now, I have really condensed how much I take with me to a fiber festival. All of my things fit in this one plastic container. And what I love about this plastic container is that I can see everything, which is totally awesome. So let's, let's see what we have in here. Okay, so I have tape. Tape is always really good to have. You never know what's going to break or what's going to rip and uh, it's great. And if you are a yarn dyer or maybe you have cell tags or cell signs, you never know when your label is going to rip or anything like that. So it's good to have tape. Now this is industrial tape. You don't have to have tape this fancy, but this is what I use and it's been great for several years. So we have our tape. Okay. The next thing that I have is a tape measure. Now you all may be wondering why would you need a tape measure at a craft fair? I like to think that all people, well not all people, I like to think that people are honest in general. But if I pay for a 10 by 10 booth, I want to make sure it is 10 by 10. Sometimes when there's a lot of different festivals or a lot of different um, vendors, you know, and you're, and you're trying to put up your tent, you're not quite sure where your boundaries are. And even you might make a mistake yourself and put your tent a little too far this way, a little too far this way. And most of the time when you go to a fiber festival, they will have, or a craft festival, they will have your, um, your booth space marked off. But it's always good to bring a tape measure just in case. Just to make sure that you are staying within your area, whether it's a 10 by 10 space, 8 by 10 space, 10 by 20 space, just to make sure that you are staying within your space and you cover yourself. So having a tape measure is a really good thing. This one is 25 feet, but it's really good to have. So we have our tape measure. Let's see, where is it? Okay, now the next thing that I carry with me is a tablecloth. Now, this white table, it isn't the most attractive table in the world. So I have this beautiful purple tablecloth that I take with me. I'm not quite sure how big this, this um, tablecloth is, but it's, it's really, really big, in fact, most of the time I fold it double and I just lay it over the table. But let me tell you why this is so great to have. Not only is it attractive, and I suggest like if you have a particular color that you like or your business has a particular logo, definitely get one to match it. But it's so great to have a, a tablecloth over your table because I keep this under the table. And I don't really want everybody to see my <laughs> my extras that I take with me. So what I do is I put this over my table to kind of just hide things, just kind of tuck things away. Um, and they're really good to have for that. So this is what I use. And it's, it's really heavy, which is good. Really like that. Moving along. All right, we got that. All right, so this is my cash box. And I debated on whether I wanted to use a cash box or not, because um, I like to have my money close to me. Um, but the great thing is I have my husband with me, so a lot of times he just watches the box, but it's great to have. This is a very simple box. It has a tray inside, you can keep your change and your dollars. And then it has this deeper, um, this deeper area in here. So maybe if you want to slip large bills in there, you can. But um, 
I don't really use it a whole lot. Sometimes I use it just depending on the festival. Sometimes I use a cash box, sometimes I don't. But there is something else that I like to use. And I'm gonna go ahead and mark this off. So, another thing that I like to use is my apron. I love this apron. I believe I got it off of Amazon. But this is my apron. And as you all can tell, I love polka dots. And I totally did not plan this. But this is my apron. And it has two pockets in it. I still have chapstick in here. It has two pockets in here and it's good for keeping anything that you need, like chapstick. So this is definitely um, an alternative method of keeping your money, your cash near you if you don't want to have the cash box. And I love it. And this last festival was a little on the warm side, so I just took this and I folded it in half and I just kind of um, I just kind of tucked it on the inside and I just wore it like this so also if you want to buy one of those half aprons you could do that as well but it's good to have an apron and it's just super cute I love this okay so we have our apron all right, so let's see. The next thing that I have are stretchy cords. Stretchy cords are great for hanging things. A lot of times when you go to a, a fiber festival or craft fair, you may have experience a lot of wind. And so what my husband and I do is we take these cords and we strap them to our grid wall, which I will get to next. So um, we strap this to our grid wall and we strap a bungee cord from the grid wall to the tent just to kind of give the tent some more weight. We also use um, sand, but sand in buckets. Now I don't have that in the house of course, but we do uh, put sand in buckets and we also use that as a weight as well. Because a lot of times when you go to fiber festivals or craft fairs, you don't have like you don't have enough to stake into the ground a lot of times when you buy a tent it comes with those stakes but we have found that sometimes they are not enough and we have seen people lose their tents even with it staked into the ground and then sometimes the the area that you have your tent on may not be able to hold a stake for example one time we had a fiber festival where we were on pavement you can't put a stake down in pavement and then our last fiber festival, we were actually on um, these little rocks, like sandy rocks. You can't put a stake down into that. So you definitely want to have something else to weigh your tent down. And we use sand inside of buckets. But we also use these stretchy cords to, um, to hang up the, to connect from the grid walls to our, I can't talk, I'm losing my words. <laughs> We use it from our grid walls to our tents. There you go. Got it. And these come in three different sizes. It's the, uh, I'm sorry, four different sizes. 12 inch, 18 inch, 24, and 36 inches. And so we have two of these and they really come in handy. So we have our, let's see, where is it? Our cords. Okay, great. Now, I touched on the grid wall a little bit. This is a 2x6 grid wall. I also have 2x4 grid walls. Just to kind of depending on the festival, just kind of depends on whether I use, um, it just depends on the size that I use. But this is a 2x6 and it's wonderful and we really like it. And there's a few parts that goes to this grid wall, so I will be referring back to the grid wall again. But let me go ahead and mark that off the list. Also, another thing that we use our bungee cords for, or our stretch cords for, is for hanging up the banner. Now this banner, I think it's a three by, three by six or a three by eight. It is huge. It has my logo on it. 
and it is a chore to unravel this and well to unroll it and put it back so I'm going to enter a video at the end of this video just kind of showing you all how my last booth was set up and so you all can see all of this in its glory but we do I have these little grommets here and we use the bungee cords to strap this to the tent so it hangs and it's just really nice and what I like about having a banner is that you you attract people with your banner it, it just really makes you stand out and so I really suggest if you are going to be doing this um, often if you're going to be having a festival often even if you don't necessarily have a business but maybe it's a hobby and you you call your hobby you know it could be Rochelle's crochet items still you might want to get a banner it really just sets you apart so that's that all right so we covered let's see banner where is the banner okay so we cover banner all right so moving on I have these lights now these are battery operated micro lights and there's 90 lights and it is 29.8 feet and so I run these lights around three corners of my booth and also in the video that I'm gonna the video clip that I'm gonna post at the end of this video you'll see these lights a little bit more but they are fantastic to use they're they're so great I got a lot of good compliments about these lights at the last festival and they're really easy to put up and they use three AA batteries really simple we were at the last festival from nine to five and they last all day really really good to have all right let's see we covered lights and we also covered batteries Definitely make sure you bring extra batteries if you are going to be using lights or something that takes batteries. Screwdriver. Definitely need a screwdriver. Now I'm going to be sharing with you all some grid wall legs and clips and so that will show you why you need um, why you need a screwdriver even more if you're using grid walls, but it's always good to have a screwdriver with you. And because I use grid walls, also, I take an extra little um, container of nuts and bolts in here as well. So, let's see, we've covered screws and we've covered a screwdriver. Okay, great. And I'm just gonna show you all these. Because I use grid walls, I have these grid wall connectors. I know that may be difficult to see, but these are what hold the grid walls together. And I don't need a lot of these, but it's good to have extras anyway. So these are grid wall connectors. And of course, I don't need this whole container, but you never know when you need extras. And a lot of times when my husband and I are putting these grid walls together, we always drop like one of the washers or one of the nuts or bolts, and it's just good to have extras. All right, so we have got that. Next thing that I have is a business card holder. These are really good to have. I'm sure you could find these at any of your Best Buy or Staples or what have you, but it just holds business cards. And what I did was is I put, I printed out my logo and I cut it out and I put it inside of here. So it slips out pretty easy. I've got it in there securely. But I just made myself a little sign on some card stock. And it just fits in there like that. And I have two of these and I just put them on both ends of my booth table. All right, speaking of business cards, let me grab those. So, I have my business cards. Here they are. Once again, going with that polka dot theme. And I absolutely love my cards. 
I definitely need to order some more. I don't have many left. But I just take these, I just take a few and I put in my holder like this. There you go. Really simple. Okay, so we covered business cards. Let's see, business cards and business card holders. Now, let's talk money. So, most of the time when you go to Fiberfest and craft fairs, a lot of times people want to use their cards. And so, you have to be ready to take debit or credit cards. Now, it's always great when they have cash. It's really easy to do, and there's no transaction fees that come along with using cash. But it's great to have a card reader. I have two card readers. Now, I run an online shop through Shopify, and so I have this that I use. And what I love about this one is that it also, not only can you swipe cards, but if it has the card reader, you can use it as well. Now in the future, I would love to upgrade so that people with Apple Pay can just tap, uh, but Shopify does offer those. So one day I hope to upgrade to that. But this is really simple to use. It just opens up like this. And it has a little uh, card accepted slip there. And this is the reader. And then it has a little base. And so when you're at your table, you can, you can set it up like this, or like I did at the last festival, all I did was, I set it up just like that on my table, and that's it. And then it also comes with a USB charger, and on one charge, this will last all day. All right, put that back. Now, what if you don't have a Shopify store? You do have other options. Back in the day, I used to sell on eBay, and that was when eBay and PayPal were all one company. So this is an older card reader. There's definitely newer card readers now, but I, when I first started, I was using a PayPal card reader. So this is your PayPal card reader. And it simply just goes into the jack of your phone. That's it. Really, really simple. So I'm going to put this back. And when you get a car, of course, it can't be one with a chip. But uh, if you have a car without a chip, you just swipe. Really simple. And the money goes into your PayPal right away. Okay, so let's see. We got our card readers. Okay, now also, you're gonna need something to put the yarn in. These are my bags that I use. Now a lot of times when you go to these fiber fastening craft fairs, people will bring their own bags, especially us crocheters and knitters that like to have our own project bags. So a lot of times when you ask people, do you need a bag? They'll say, no, I have one. But every once in a while, people will need a bag. And I have these bags. It's a set of three different sizes. And these are paper bags, of course. I remember when I first started doing, uh, doing festivals and shows, I would have plastic bags. And a lot of people didn't really appreciate the fact that I had plastic bags. And as someone that recycles, I can understand that. So I switched over to brown paper bags. And like I said, they come in different sizes. So I have the little one here. And then there's a medium size. And then you have the really big size. And I feel like this is going to last me all year. Because like I said, a lot of times when you go to these festivals, people don't need a bag. They already have their bag. They already come to shop and said so they will bring their own bag. But it is good to have a few on hand, especially if people have already filled their bags with goodies. So this is really good to have. 
And these are small and medium bags. All right, so we got our bags. Okay, so here are a few things that I take with me. I'd like to take safety pins. Well, not safety pins, paper, Lord, I can't talk. I like to take clothes pins with me. Now, I like to take clothes pins with me because these are what I use to hold up my cell signs, which I will show you in just a moment. This is a notebook, my bent folder. Anyway, this is what I keep my cell signs in. And so inside, I have my cell signs. And just for an example, this is my Delirious VK sign. And you have your price on here. Um, sometimes you can include the tax in your price, and sometimes you can charge the tax up front. And so I have that on my on my sheet. And what I do is That's all I do. Really simple. Hope you all can see that. Basically, I just take the clothespin and that's how I show my cell sign. Really, really simple. And then I have other signs in here as well. Credit card signs. And so that's really helpful to have that. Alright, so we have our clothespins. Let's see, we got that, and we have our signs. Let's go ahead and mark that off. And also, it's good to have signs for individual products, but another thing you may want to do, let's see, where is it? You may want to have a sign that has all of your products on it. So for the last festival, I had Pop Life Fingering, uh, Delirious DK, Adore Worsted, and I had some project bags. And so all of it is included there. And that's really great because a lot of times people don't want to stop you and ask you, how much is this? How much is that? When you have your signs in order, they can look at it and keep it moving and decide if they want to buy it or not. All right, let's take that out. This is another little bag that we carry. This has our, this has another screwdriver in it. And then we also have an, an electric one. So sometimes my husband and I both are putting grid walls together. And so it's good to have multiple screwdrivers. All right, and in here I just have other little knickknacks, uh, some progress keepers that I was selling. I have some little lights that I use for the table. See how that lights up? I hope you can see it. And then I have an extra charger because another thing that I also bring with me is a mobile charger. I don't have it with me today because I'm trying to keep it charged, um, but I also use a, um, a mobile charger. Because if you're using your phone all day as your point of sale, the batteries can run a little bit low. All right, and then I have more batteries in there. So this is just a little bit of everything in this bag. Okay, let's see. Is there anything else I had marked off yet? Okay, all right, so let's move on. Hand sanitizer. Being the germaphobe that I am, <laughs> it is very important for me to have hand sanitizer. Just for other people to use, but also myself, I have hand sanitizer. And also in my bag here, I have my own little personal hand sanitizer. Most of the time when I have this at my table, people don't use it. So I was starting to wonder, well, should I keep it out if people are, you know, are they going to use it or not? 
this weekend or the, the last weekend when I had the fiber festival, a lady came up. She looked at my hand sanitizer and she said, oh my God, you have hand sanitizer. That's so wonderful because they didn't have any in the portage on. I was like, okay, good to know. I mean, I don't want everybody to come in and use mine, but I felt good in the fact that I had some for her. I think that was, that was great. So, and a lot of times at, at these um, craft fairs and fiber festivals, they don't have bathrooms. And so if you, for whatever reason, go use it and they don't have uh, soap or if they don't have one of those washing stations, definitely keep some of this. Okay, hand sanitizer. All right, well, let's see what else we have in here. I also have a pair of scissors that I take with me. You never know when you'll need scissors. Scissors, it's like tape. You just never know. You may need it. All right, so we have scissors. Okay. Also, another thing, let's go back to our grid walls here. So in order for these grid walls to stand up, you do need grid wall legs. And uh, let's see, what did I do with mine? This is an example of a grid wall leg. Mine is in a T shape, but you can also get the L shape. And these are great. What I like about these is that they keep the um, grid wall sturdy so it doesn't blow over or knock over. Really easy. And of course we use our screws and nuts and bolts to put this together. So really, really simple. Okay, so we got our legs. We also cover our clips. So you may be wondering, how do you hang the yarn on your grid wall so you can have it as a display? In this container, I have my grid wall hooks. You can get these in many different sizes, three inch, eight inch, 10, whatever you wanna do. But these are my grid wall hooks. They're very easy to install. All you have to do is that. There it is. And I'll put some yarn on here later just so you all can see how that goes. But um, we got our grid wall hooks. So, that is everything in here. Yes, all of this came out of here. This container, it just has all of my grid, my grid hooks in it. That's it. So we have emptied this container. We have gone through everything. All right, so let me check. Oh, another thing that we take with us are mats. As I discussed earlier, the surfaces that you that you have your booth on can vary. Sometimes we've been in the grass, sometimes we've been on dirt, just different situations. So it's good to have mats. And I know sometimes when people have their booths, they will cover their entire booth floor in mats. And I really love those nice wood grain ones, but a lot of times we do outdoor shows. So I'll take a couple of these with us just so my husband and I can have something to stand on and also the foam is really thick so if you've been standing doing a fiber festival or craft fair all day these are really good to have and this is actually a gym mat I bought it from Walmart it was like in the treadmill section but they're great to have and of course you can order these online all right, so we have our mat. We talked about our sand bucket anchors. Definitely have those. Okay, let's see. Also, make sure you have a point of sale. So, whether it be PayPal that you're using, Shopify or whatever, um, make sure you download the correct apps that you need. For Shopify, I have two apps. And then, of course, you can have your PayPal app downloaded to your phone or to your tablet. And a lot of times with FiberFest, they don't have the best Wi-Fi. And so you may want to invest in a hotspot. So maybe your device is a hotspot or you might want to buy an external hotspot to use. So let's mark those off. Okay. A few other things I wanted to discuss is um, 
people like to use cash so you definitely want to have change with you anywhere from 50 to 100 dollars i think i took 60 to the last show just small bills ones fives tens and just some change with you as well most of my prices are set at very even numbers like 25 so a lot of times people will just slip me a 20 and a 5 and you know they just keep it moving but it's good to have change because the last thing you want is for your very first customer to come and they buy $30 worth of merchandise and they hand you a $100 bill. What are you going to do? <laughs> do you have change? So definitely make sure that you have change with you. All right. Let's see what else is on the list. Okay. So another thing that you want to have is um, a lot of times when you go to these private festivals, they may want you to donate a door prize. And even if you go to a craft festival, they may want you to donate a door prize. And so I always like to take at least one skein of yarn. This is some bulky yarn that I have. And this is my door prize. The great thing about door prizes is when people come in, and they win a door prize at the very beginning of the festival they may see this and go oh i like this yarn or i like this hat let me see what else this person has and so they will find your booth and say you know and at least come in and look at your stuff and you know with this video it, it doesn't have to be just about yarn or craft or, or knitting any sort of booth it could be a woodworking booth and i'm sure you could still pick up a few things so if you um if you volunteer to give a door prize or if you're asked to give a door prize definitely i would give one it's really great and people you know it, it brings them in and it brings them into your booth and so every fiber festival that i like to go to if they ask me i do like to donate a door prize all right so we have our door prize Another thing too is if you are a knitter, crocheter, spinner, bring something to work with you on. One thing I love is when I go to festivals and I see spinners, they bring their spinning wheels and they're just going and going and going. Or if someone is crocheting or knitting at their festival, it's so great to see. And also it just it gives you something to do while you wait for customers and you're just in between customers and also it serves as a good talking point because people will ask you hey what are you making what's this project so definitely bring something to work on okay a few other things that you want to bring with you are food snacks coolers ice because a lot of times when you go to these festivals especially some of the smaller festivals they will not have a food vendor and sometimes they will have a food vendor but maybe it's a little too pricey for you or maybe you're so busy at your booth that you can't get away from your booth or maybe you are running the booth by yourself and you can't get up and leave the booth to go get something to eat so definitely bring with you a cooler with some ice and snacks and some food just to get you through the day all right so we got drinks cooler ice packs let's see what else do we need oh also if you are selling yarn or you're selling woodworking or whatever craft jewelry make sure you bring samples if you have a handmade booth make sure you bring samples of the things that you have made using your product whether it may be um, samples of things you've made if you have a clothing booth maybe you want to show something that you've sewn or something that you crocheted or knitted or if you're a woodworker um, show things that you have made it really pulls people in and it also gives them a way to show or to see how that product is being used and just as a little personal uh, message if you are a yarn dyer or if you sell, yeah, if you are a yarn dyer and you have samples, it's very important to have both crochet and knitted samples. I am both a crocheter and a knitter. People crochet. Not everybody in the world knits. And a lot of times when you go to festivals, you only see knitted samples. Have some crochet samples as well. Even if you don't know how to crochet, find a friend, ask him or her 
to crochet a sample for you out of your yarn just so you can have something to show because I've learned that people really appreciate when you show that hey I'm included in this too so definitely have knitting crochet um, weaving just use your product in diverse ways just so that you can bring different types of people into your booth okay so I'm running out of room another thing that I use are these amazing Ikea bags. These are awesome. These Ikea bags hold so much. Sorry for the crinkling. So in this bag, I just got back from a festival. Let me see if I can make some room. Oh, okay. So as you can see in this bag, it's full of yarn. All sorts of yarn bins. That's going to be going with me to the next festival. And also in here I have... I also have project bags. These are project bags that I'll be selling there as well. So, make sure you bring your things. And these IKEA bags are... Right. I do believe I got those on Amazon. All right, so we're scratching off everything. Let's see, is there anything else I'm forgetting? Okay, we've got our IKEA bags. All right. And definitely double check this on the way out of the house. I keep a few of these around the house just to double check. So thank you all so much for watching this video. I really do appreciate it. And I hope that you all can pick up some tips for your booth as well. And um, I really enjoy doing these craft festivals. What I love about them is that I get to meet people in person that I talk to online and that it's really, really special to meet my customers in person. And also just to meet my subscribers in person it's really really a pleasure and i really do enjoy it so thank you all so much for watching as you all can see the booth setup is pretty easy with these grid walls if it be still but yeah they hold quite a lot so yeah that's just how i set up my booth if there's anything that i missed please put in the description box below if there are things that you take to your booth that I did not mention here or if you have some um, suggestions or tips for other people that are doing craft festivals or fiber festivals please leave in the description or please leave in the comment section below I will put in the description box below my information so yeah I think that is all that I have so until next time